So as one stands for the tasbih during the tasbih time frames facing the qibla, as you say, Subhanak Allahumma, glory be to you, O Allah, as said in Surah 10, verse 10, while raising both hands as Prophet Zechariah demonstrated, which meant to glorify Allah similar to the motions of the birds with their wings outspread, and thus you have now started the tasbih glorification. Then the simplest way to glorify our Lord with His praise is Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah, the praise belongs to Allah, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. And then repeat it at least three times, for that would become an awwab, repeatedly glorifying and praising Allah. And the reason why it's three times is because it's in plural, minimum three. Repeat it as many times as you like. Now you can either say other verses that you see highlighted in green in page one for glorifying Allah, and page three for praising Allah. And in the second part of this video, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's most excellent names as a special bonus, inshallah. It is worth waiting. Now, before we see the next step, which is before the last step, while we glorify with the praise of our Lord and raise our hands, there is a tone of voice that we are told about in Surah 7, Araf, verse 205 to 206, that we must apply while glorifying as follows. And remember your Lord within yourself, your thoughts, in humility and in fear, and without the loudness of the speech. In the early mornings and the afternoons. And do not be among the heedless ones. Indeed, those who are near your Lord are not too proud of His worship. And they glorify Him, and to Him they prostrate. Now remember, the Salat also has a tone of voice which was explained in the Salat video, in which is said in Surah 17 verse 110. And do not be loud, that how? During your Salat, nor quietly therein, but seek a way between that. Thus, your tone of voice during Salat can fluctuate, as long as the middle tone is balanced. We'll be seeing a comparison of the Salat and the Tasbih and the traditional Salat at the end of this video, which is part of part 1 of 2, inshallah. So you therefore have a different tone of voice during the Tasbih, which should be within yourself, in humility and in fear, and without being loud in speech. In other words, a low tone, and not a loud tone nor a middle tone. It can either be quiet, silent, just like Prophet Zachariah demonstrated but with hand signals, or it can also be a low tone with hand signals while glorifying in the praise of our Lord. Henceforth, we are now at the next step in the Tasbih glorification, which is before the last step, and that is to prostrate, as it says in the next verse, Surah 7 verse 206, the last verse of this surah that we saw, to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, those who are near your Lord are not too proud of His worship, and they glorify Him, and to Him they prostrate. How to prostrate was thoroughly explained through the Quranic verses only in the Salat video because you are required to prostrate during the Salat as well. Click on the video here in case you didn't see it. Therefore, I will not be going through the full details as you can find it in the Salat video. Nonetheless, I will remind you about the main verses that prove how to prostrate as the reminder benefits the believers. So how to prostrate is said in Surah 17 verse 107 to 109 as follows. Say, believe in it or do not believe. Indeed, those who are given the knowledge from before it, when it is recited to them, they fall down on their chins. Didadakan, prostrating. Sujjada. Just like I said in the Salat video, most translations translate the word didadakan as on their faces. That is because of Surah 48 verse 29, which was completely misunderstood and proven in the Salat video. But if this is new to you, then the Arabic word, لِلَدَقَان, which the letter Lam, here in the beginning of this word, is a preposition, meaning the actual word is Adaqan, which is a noun in the masculine plural tense, and it is in the genitive case. The triliteral root, Dal, Qaf, Nun, occurs three times in the Quran as a noun Adaqan. In Surah 17, verse 107, which we are looking at now, in Surah 17, 109, which we are going to see just after this because it confirms the second prostration, and in Surah 36, verse 8. Let's read what it says as it clarifies its meaning from verse 7. Already the word has proved true upon most of them, that they do not believe. We have indeed placed on their necks, shackles, and up to the chins, so their heads are forced up. In Surah 36 verse 8, all translations translate the word aladakan as chins, which is the same word in Surah 17 verse 107 and 109, which we are going to see inshallah. So therefore, you prostrate on your chin, and then the next verse tells us what to say while you are in prostration. And they say, Subhana Rabbina in kana wa'adu Rabbina la Glory be to our Lord. Indeed, the promise of our Lord must be fulfilled. 
What is being fulfilled? The Quran being recited. And the Quran means recitation. In Surah 32, Sajda, Surah Prostration, verse 15, says, The only people who believe in our verses are those who, when they are reminded of them, fall down prostrating, and they glorify with the praise of their Lord without any arrogance. This is a prostration verse. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. This was the first prostration. And in order to do the next prostration, you have to come back into the kneeling position. In Surah 7 verse 206, which is the last verse of Surah 7, as it says, Indeed, those who are near your Lord are not too proud of His worship, and they glorify Him, and to Him they prostrate. Thus, you should glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you prostrate, which you should do before the first prostration. And now the second, which we will see the proof after I show you the verse that says how to glorify during the prostration. Surah Waqiyah, Surah 56, verse 74 and verse 96 both say, فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ Therefore glorify the name of your Lord, the Tremendous. Which in reply would be, Subhana Rabbina Al-Azim. Glory be to our Lord, the Tremendous. And then you fall on your chin for the second prostration, which is in the next verse, in Surah 17, verse 109. And again, they fall down on their chins, weeping, for it augments their humble devotion. This also directly connects with Surah 19, verse 58, as it says, Those are the ones whom Allah has bestowed favor upon them among the prophets, from among the descendants of Adam, and those we carried with Nuh, Noah, and among the descendants of Ibrahim and Israel, and from among those whom we guided and selected. When the verses of the most gracious spirit are recited to them, they fell down prostrating and weeping. And this confirms that the second prostration in Surah 17 verse 109, which is of course a prostration to the chin, as chins is mentioned in Surah 17 verse 109. And on the second prostration, Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again using Surah 87 verse 1, which says, Glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High. Why? Because the Surah 53 verse 62 says, Therefore prostrate before Allah and worship, which means to glorify after you've prostrated. And glorification is a form of worship, as it is confirmed in Surah 7 verse 206 right here that we just saw. As it says, Indeed, those who are near your Lord are not too proud of His worship, and they glorify Him, and to Him they prostrate. Thus, in Surah 87, verse 1, it would be best to say, Glory be to our Lord, the Most High. Subhana Rabbina A'la. And Allah knows best. So glorify with the praise of your Lord and be among the prostrators and worship your Lord until the certainty comes to you. And Allah knows best. And remember the prayer to say while changing positions during the Tasbih, which was in Surah 10, verse 10. Glory be to you, O Allah. Subhanak Allahumma. This is for those who enter Jannat in Naim, the blissful paradise, the highest paradise. And then you come back to the standing position to finalize the tasbih. And the best prayer to begin finalizing the tasbih is by saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The praise belongs to Allah, Lord of the knowledgeable ones, as it is said also in Surah 10 verse 10. And finally, this brings us to the last step, seeking forgiveness during the tasbih, glorification, and the echo repeat glorifying, awab. In case you want to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more before you seek His forgiveness, you can as much as you want until the next glorification time frame. But to end the tasbih, you must seek forgiveness. And this is said to us in a very well-known surah, Surah Nasr, verse 110, verse 3. Since this surah only has three small verses, I will read them and note there is a major prophecy here to be fulfilled again. When comes the help or the support of Allah and the victory, and you see mankind entering into the judgment, religion of Allah in multitudes. Then glorify with the praise of your Lord and ask His forgiveness. Indeed, He is the acceptor of repentance, the Redeemer. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا SubhanAllah! Thus, a major prophecy is to reoccur when the support or the help of Allah comes and the victory. We will see mankind entering into the judgment religion of Allah in multitudes. Then the last verse tells us to glorify with the praise of our Lord and ask His forgiveness. Hence, we are to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness after we've glorified in the praise of our Lord. This is also said to us in Surah 40, Forgiver, verse 55, which says to seek forgiveness and glorify with the praise of your Lord as follows. So be patient. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth and ask forgiveness for your sin and Glorify with the praise of your Lord in the late evening and the morning. We have seen this verse during the Tasbih time frames. And note, Surah 17 verse 25. 
your Lord knows best of what is within your souls. If you are righteous, then indeed he is for those who awab, repeatedly glorify and praise, forgiving. Therefore, in order to seek forgiveness the best way possible through the Quran, we will now see all the occurrences of forgiveness in the Quran through its triliteral root, Rain Fa Ra, which occurs 234 times in the whole Quran in nine derived forms. In order to properly appreciate and see this, all of its occurrences have been placed into three pages. And that brings us to page four, five, and six. This is going to be the longest part of this video and its conclusion, inshallah. As you can see, the glorious Quran is fully detailed in all the subjects that we saw and even more. And it is also fully detailed and rich in knowledge in forgiveness. La ilaha illallah.